everybody. We're at the Oak Bank Tim Hortons. SO commercial car block, truck stop, whatever you want to call it. And this is the mess we got to deal with here in the mornings. I slept here overnight because I got to pick up a load just down the street right now. We got people blocking this all up in here. You got that guy with the trusses over there blocking that entire driveway. So the entrance, you can't get in here. So it's very tight. It's very tight. There comes a guy in here right now. Let's see how he's going to get in here. Which way is he going to go? It's a grain hauler. Oh, oh, looking at his options, looking at his options. Okay, he's going to come in the exit because the entrance is blocked. And people, all these people blocking everything, they're just inside getting Timmy's. That's how much people love Timmy's here in Canada. They will go to great lengths. And what's this guy going to do? Okay, so he's going to pull all the way around here. I hope he doesn't go and uh, block that exit now, because then I can't get out. Oh no, he's going to go park over there. Smart guy, smart guy. Crazy, right? It's just chaos, just chaos every morning here. So good morning, welcome to the chaos. Make sure you go down below my video, make sure you're subscribed if you don't mind. At the end of the video, if you like it, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button twice. Now I've got nothing to complain about. I don't have a trailer behind me. My trailer's waiting for me down the road, so I don't have a problem. I'll be able to get out. There's still a, a lane for the exit. Though it would be hard to get fuel here. The fuel pumps are in like an odd spot. It's a, it's a very small lot, like a small property, right? And since they got a Tim Hortons here, I don't know what it is about Tim Hortons, but we all just have to have it. I mean, it's good coffee, but I would compare it to like Dunkin' Donuts in the US. Like it's, it's good, but it's not like, oh boy, we gotta go back and get another one right now after you have it, right? It's coffee. It does the job, it wakes you up. They got decent food in there, but something about Tim Hortons does something to a Canadian. It's like a magnet. You Look at all these people, look at all these guys. Even though, even though there's no room to park, even though the lot is so small, they couldn't help themselves. It's like an addiction. They had to stop. They needed their Timmy's. Even though across the street you can get coffee at the Petro Pass. Down the road you can get coffee at like Flying J or Husky. Down the road that way. I mean there's Petro Pass on the other side of the city too. But this one spot, though it's going to be the tightest spot to get in and out of drivers still. They look at it like, no, it's worth it. I might get stuck in there, you know. It's worth it for Timmy's. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm one of them. I don't know why. I mean, McDonald's coffee is just as good. But we still go to Tim Hortons. I don't know, what are they putting in their coffee? Well, let's roll. So today's a pretty easy day, just doing some local stuff again. Like I said uh, yesterday and the day before, I've just got to be home for this weekend. Uh, we have our uh, couple of events going on this weekend, and it's Father's Day. Got to be home for that. So I'm just grabbing a trailer, actually, in uh, in Winnipeg. You're just grabbing it and just bringing it to Portage La Prairie an hour down the road. I'll probably call it a day after that. I think this guy's gonna want to cut in front of me. Keeps edging forward from my left over here. I'm bigger. I got a bigger nose. I'll just stick it right in there. Just stick your nose in. It's like this. This is how you do it. Now everybody after they've gotten their Timmy's is very frustrated with all the traffic and sometimes they get a little grumpy so you gotta be a little bit patient. And don't snap back at them. We're big, we're bulky, we're slow, we're in everybody's way. You gotta wake up every morning and realize that people are gonna be mad at you for no reason. And that's okay. Just do your best to stay out of their way and do your best to, you know, Follow the rules, obey right of ways. And what else can you do? Four wheelers be four wheelers. 
as a truck driver, you have to have a defensive mindset at all times. You can't be an aggressive driver. You could be defensively aggressive like I was there, like just get your nose in there, otherwise they're gonna try to cut in front of you because no one wants to be behind the truck. So you saw me come up to the intersection there, the van was waiting already and I came up after the van. So that's the order, whoever gets there first, that's how the line works. The van got there and then I got there, then the pickup came and tried, looked like he was gonna try to sneak in front of me. He ended up not trying, but I also was kind of assertive and you know, as soon as the van started moving, I stuck my nose right in there and said, nope, this space is mine, right? Now, if he would have gotten there first, obviously I would have yielded to him. But whatever, that's besides the point, we're trucking. I feel light as a feather, I got no trailer behind me. Let's go get this trailer. Really easy day. Next week will probably be a little bit more busy. Yeah, as this week we kind of, uh, well, we kept ourselves busy. I mean, it wasn't a bad week. We kept ourselves busy around here, so I'm happy with it. Gonna try to get a few more nickels next week. Let's speed limit here, 100. Ah, home sweet home, eh? It's actually kind of chilly in here. I've noticed this thing is very well insulated, better insulated than the other one. Cause on the hottest summer days, I come into the shop and it's cool, like cold in the shop. I'm hoping that's gonna be the same thing in wintertime, just the opposite as freezing outside, but it's still pretty warm inside. We have floor heat, which heats the shop right now. That's that's the only heat in here. Uh, I've gotta wire up a 220 volt outlet in here yet so that I can have my little heater running if I need to, but the floor heat does enough. That's all you really need to keep the shop warm. All right, so let's get old blue in here. I ordered some drive tires for today. Uh, my dad went and got some new ones and it sort of uh, motivated me to get them. Now we have these over here. We've got these Goodyear G182s. These are expensive tires. I bought them through our works account. They get a discount. I just got the bill for them, finally. $750 each, $1,500 sitting right here. And I don't want them. I'm ordering uh, something else. So uh, I went to go order six new tires like this, right? And I don't get the same discount, or even if I did, let's say I went through the same account and I got the same discount. $750 times six, we're looking at $4,500 plus installation. It would be more than that, uh, plus what? How much would it be, like 35 bucks a tire or something? A couple hundred bucks, maybe a little bit of $5,000 plus tax. So I'm looking at a bill of over $5,000 just for six tires, because I already have these, right? So I went and bought eight tires. Now this is gonna cause a whole bunch of comments, but that's good, because the more comments I get on my channel, the more Google and YouTube rep, uh, uh, push my video out to new people. So we'll get a whole bunch of new subscribers out of this. I went and ordered Blackhawks, which are a, a cheap, cheaper brand. I'm gonna give them a shot. Now, obviously being a cheaper brand, they won't last as long, but you get what you pay for. You pay less, but they last less, less time, right? So I'm gonna try it. My dad bought them for his truck. He bought eight Blackhawks and he has them on his truck. I believe they come from the same company as Hankook's. You know, I wanted to put uh, like Michelin's or Goodyear's on, but tires are so expensive, so expensive. Like these tires here, without an account or without any special fancy discounts, those are about a thousand dollars each. A thousand bucks each, two thousand dollars for two tires. That's, that's a non-starter. I can't spend eight thousand dollars just on my drives because I got to buy steers too in fall. And that's another two thousand dollars for two tires because those are about a thousand dollars each. So ten thousand dollars, that's what I've been saying, that's what these tires are worth, right? These Blackhawks, I ordered eight of them, closed shoulder. Uh, after tax, installation, everything said and done, me driving away, $4,000. I got eight Blackhawk tires 
for $1,000 less than what I would pay for six good years. So now I have these spare tires here. Anybody want some tires? They're for sale. I don't want them. 500 bucks each. It's a deal. They only have a couple of thousand miles on them. Maybe one, two thousand miles or so, because I only had them on for a short little while. Look at this tread. They're perfect. They're brand new. Look at that. Perfect tires. I paid $750 for each of them. Someone want to take them off my hands for a thousand bucks? Now these are a bit of an odd size of tire. 295, 75R, 22 and a halfs. So they won't fit on, they're not the most common tire in Canada. So I understand that not a lot of people could use these, but it's a pretty good discount. I realize I'm losing money on that, but it's either that or they just sit here. I'd like to keep them as spares. Honestly, I've thought about that, but there's nowhere for me to carry them on my truck. I can't put them anywhere on my truck and I don't haul my own trailer. I have a different trailer every week. I, I can't keep moving them back and forth and sometimes there's just literally no place to put them. I, I can't carry them with me, they're kind of useless to me. Unless if I were to get a flat tire like right here in town, then I could just come and get them. But No, they're just going to end up sitting here for, for weeks and weeks, so uh, yeah, pretty much half price. 295, 75R, 22 and a halfs. If you have use for them, if you're in the Manitoba area and you're willing to come get them. I'm not bringing them anywhere. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude. That's a pretty good discount already. Uh, I think you can come get them. <laughs> I'm not happy, as you might tell, about losing the money on them, but I do, uh, uh, I may as well get something for them, right? Let me know down below in the comments or send me an email. Actually, you know what? This is something that you would want a response. I, sometimes the comments don't get to me for some reason. If you really want the tires and you're serious and you live in the area, email me, truckerjoshvlogs at gmail.com with the subject line tires or something like that. Uh, and we can work something out. If not, if I don't sell them, they're just gonna sit here. So I was hesitant going with a cheaper brand of tire because I like to have good solid American brand tires on my truck, right? Michelin, BF Goodrich, Goodyear, well-known tires that have a good reputation that last a long time, do the job. But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta uh, pinch some pennies somewhere. And we'll see, we'll see. You'll, you'll be able to tell right here on my vlogs, was it a good decision, was it a bad decision? I made an executive decision over my business. I said, we're gonna save this money. Even if I don't sell those tires, I still saved a thousand dollars by buying these eight tires and just leaving those sit there. So if I sell them for a thousand dollars, I mean it kind of balances a bit less, but it is what it is. Uh, we just got to make do with what we got, I guess, and we'll see how these tires do. I'll let you see them once they're on the truck. I ordered them, so they'll be here Monday. My truck is going in for a service Monday morning. It's Friday today when I'm filming this. So once it's done with the service, if there's time, I'll take it there Monday afternoon. They'll get the tires switched up for me. If not, we'll maybe do it Tuesday morning. But I need to get back on the road as soon as possible. So I'll keep you updated. I mean, uh, of course, there's gonna be comments out here that are, that are gonna say I'm gonna regret it. And there's gonna be comments that'll say, hey, they worked well for me. Guess we'll find out. I'll let you know how they do. I'll mark the odometer and I'll write it down in my booklet of when we installed them and we'll see how many miles we get out of them. Most tires you can get about, you can get close to 300,000 miles out of uh, some tires if you drive them right. Between 200 and 300,000 miles. We'll see what happens. I'm always nervous spending big money, especially on new brands that I haven't used before, but hey, if you have any experiences, do you run Blackhawk tires? Let me know down below in the comments section what you think of them. By the time you watch this, I'll already have bought them and they'll be on the truck, so there's no convincing me not to buy them. But uh, I'd like to know what your experience is with them. The big brands were just a little too expensive. 
couldn't justify it. Prices have gone up a lot in everything, right? So we'll see. Was it worth the savings? Who knows? We'll find out. Stay tuned to Trucker Josh and subscribe so you don't miss. Hopefully they don't blow up on me and fly all over the place. One thing I will say though, is that they're virgin tires, brand new tires. They're not recaps. When I had my Volvo way back in the day, I remember I put recaps on there and those did pretty good for me. They did really good. They never flew apart and they lasted decently long, but I went with virgin tires, just a little bit of a different brand. I'm a little nervous about it. Let's see what happens. These are the tires I got on here right now. Worn right down. I mean, they may be able to go for a little while longer, but not much longer. And then I have this one, this Hankook on here. This was the used tire that I bought. It's done really good for me, actually. That's the same tires that my dad had on his truck uh, before he just changed them recently. And they did really well for him. This tire here uh, has got some pretty good tread, but there is something stuck in it right here. And it's not leaking. Not yet. But, uh, I mean, keep picking things up. Keep driving over things. These are doing all right. All right, I might have been able to get a little bit more out of them. But these here, again, very worn down. And these ones, again, like the same as the other ones, 295, 75R, 22 and a halfs. These are Firestones. FD 692s. They did really good. It's a good brand. And, uh, you know, did well for me. We'll see how those Black Hawks do. We'll see. At least they'll all match again, right? And the steers, I'll probably always go with Michelin X lines. These on the front are 275 ADR 22 and a half. They've actually been doing really good too. These I am going to keep on here until uh, fall time, just before winter. This is the driver side though. The driver side is always better than the passenger side. Passenger side wears down faster because the truck is usually leaning this way, right? New passenger side. Still doing all right. I think we can make it till fall. We'll see. four o'clock and like I said before we have that appointment Monday morning so it'll be a little bit of a long weekend I'd like to get moving Monday afternoon I mean we'll see Let's see what happens Let's see what they got for me it seemed to be a little bit slow this week every now and then we go through a slow patch and not much to do and all of a sudden we're super, super busy and everybody's scrambling. I guess that's the whole point of business, right? It can never just be like steady, same pace every day. It's just some days are just giver, giver, giver. Other days are like, yeah, yeah. Anyways, let's go home and hold my baby. I miss him and my wife. Oh, what is this? What what is going on here? <laughs>